There's a million and one tools out there to make indie games and almost all of them want to take your money. Why are you running? That's because most people dreaming of making indie games think that in order to make a game, you have to be like the big boy studios that pay an ass load of cash for Maya, Unity Pro, Pro Tools, blah, blah, blah. These tech companies take advantage of your ignorance. And the only way for you to not be ignorant is to listen to me and subscribe. I'm your best friend right now. I actually make indie games full time. I've made hundreds and thousands of dollars from my indie games and most of the tools I used were free. The ones that weren't, well, we're gonna talk about those and the free alternatives. Okay, so first let's talk about my favorite free tool and that is my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. I used this same game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in just 14 days and I want to give it to you for free. In high school, my friends used to call me the most generous boy. I've always been a generous boy. Getting nominated as the most generous boy ensured that I had a lot of friends and so that's what I want from you. I just want you to be my friend. Download it below, totally free. All right, let's jump into tools that aren't made by me, specifically 2D art tools for both pixel art and more elaborate illustrative art. Now, a lot of gatekeeping game devs will tell you to use vector art tools like Adobe Illustrator. Vector art basically means you can scale a sprite, let's say a character, enemy, you can scale it into infinity. If I wanted to print a Mario balloon for, let's say, a toddler bacteria's birthday, I could do it with vector art. But of course, we're not doing that, are we? We're not printing anything. We're making games and games are on screens and screens are made out of pixels. But Thomas is just too lazy to understand vector art. For the record, my degree was related to all things print. That is vector art. Also, I started making games with Adobe Flash, which was vector art. And after years of using vector art, I've officially abandoned it for raster art. That is art made with actual pixels and not equations. Sure, it's not scalable, but as long as you illustrate something in 4K, that's 3840 by 21 pixels, you're generally fine. Okay, so what are some raster art tools that are free? Well, Adobe Photoshop is free, but only for a seven day trial. I have a feeling the Adobe CEO was not the most generous boy in high school. Now, I'll be honest, I pay the Adobe CEO more than my lunch money every month. And that's because I really love Photoshop. Despite the fact that it crashes every time I try and resize anything, what is going on? Photoshop really is an amazing piece of software, especially because it talks to Unity effectively. What I mean is I can simply save a PSD, that's a Photoshop document, and Unity will instantly know what to do with it. I can just go back and forth between Unity and Photoshop making changes. Even better, if you save a Photoshop file as a PSB, that's a Photoshop big document, Unity, it's gonna break down each layer into separate sprites. I mean, that's a huge win and it saves a ton of time. When I was a young whippersnapper, I had to export each layer as a PNG. And that brings me to GIMP or the GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is hands down considered the best Photoshop alternative and it's free and open source. The software is maintained and updated with a large group of volunteers across the world. Whereas Photoshop is updated with paid top tier talent who all live in San Jose, California and pay $4,000 for a small apartment. Despite this, it's kind of crazy how similar it is to Photoshop. GIMP's core tools and features are basically the same. Its layering system is basically the same and a similar set of effects and filters like hue, saturation, and lightness, blur, curves, they're all there. But how exactly does GIMP stack up to Photoshop specifically in its relationship to Unity? I mean, that's really what matters. How is it as a game dev tool? Well, for starters, GIMP doesn't support smart objects and adjustment layers. These features are what you would call non-destructive. So in Photoshop, if you, let's say, wanted to convert a tree to a smart object, you could add a blur effect to it and turn that effect off later if you realized you didn't want blurry trees. This is actually a big deal. For the first half of Neversong's development, almost all of my art in Photoshop were smart objects, simply because I knew I wanted to change or reuse the original files later. Now, I eventually rasterized all the art towards the end of the game's development. Once I was sure, I liked how they look, but at the beginning of development, it was crucial to kind of feeling out what I wanted my 2D game to look like. Additionally, Unity is practically made for Photoshop. Like I said, you can import PSDs and also PSB layers into Unity seamlessly, just by pressing Control S and then Alt Tab and hopping over into Unity. GIMP, not so much. Sure, you can export your GIMP XCF document as a PSD or a PNG, but that's still an extra step. When you're hopping between an art program and Unity 100 times a day, 100 times a year, that's 10,000 exports. It adds up and it's really not efficient. All that said, there are plenty of Unity developers out there who swear by GIMP. Trust me, they show up in my live streams all the time. It's kind of annoying, but they love GIMP. It really is an incredible free alternative and you should definitely check it out if you want to avoid paying the Adobe CEO your lunch money. Last but not least, regarding art tools, let's not forget about 3D tools. There's really no reason to even say it because most of you know it, but just use Blender. I'm still a bit baffled that it's free. Granted, the user interface did used to suck, but now with the 
the recent update, Blender is a top tier 3D software. And you can do everything from modeling, unwrapping, sculpting, painting, animating, so much more. And like Photoshop, importing a proprietary .blend file into Unity is as easy as, well, just saving the model in your Unity folder. That's about it. One final note about Blender, it is harder than learning, say, something like Photoshop. And perhaps you already knew that, but I just wanted to let you know so that you don't get discouraged. It's kind of a lot like learning to drive stick. A lot of the hotkeys are muscle memory, but once you figure it out, you won't be wrecking your 1998 Nissan Altima again after shifting into first gear. Now, let's talk about development tools. Unity is better than Unreal. If you disagree, comment below. See what I did there? That's called getting engagement for the YouTube algorithm. Also, smash the like button if you've made it this far. That would really mean a lot to me. Now, obviously, there's a billion reasons to use and not use Unity or Unreal. Overall, they're both pretty great, and also they're both free. Well, not so fast. Unreal charges a 5% royalty fee for any game made by Unreal that makes over a million bucks. So if you make a million bucks with your Unreal game, Steam's gonna take 30%, leaving 700 grand. Unreal will take 5% of that, which is 35 grand. Then you basically pay 40% taxes on the remaining $665,000, which leaves you with $399,000. Obviously guys, that's a lot of money, but when you realize you made a million bucks and now it's 399,000, that is the most depressing thing I've said all year. Oh, and don't forget, if you're the most generous boy like me, you also give 10% to your local Baptist church. That leaves just enough money to pay for some groceries. And some people still ask me why I'm libertarian. So it's basically free if you don't make a great game. Got it. All in all, I do recommend Unity. Funny thing about Unity is that they say if you make more than $100,000, you have to pay for a subscription. Now, there's a loophole here. If you do make more than $100,000, just don't tell them you did. <laughs> I don't recommend lying here. I'm just saying, don't tell the truth. Unity is honestly an incredible tool and it can be used to port to pretty much every platform. Actually, I've ported both of my games to Switch, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Apple iOS, Apple TV, obviously PC and Mac, and that was all Unity. It has an incredible community and the documentation is top notch. Honestly, it's better than Unreal in this regard. For example, if you have a bug that you can't quite iron out with Unity, it's always just one Google search away. So I'm gonna make up a bug right now. Let's see, um, computer, catches fire when opening unity ah see simple solution right at the top here just use a fire extinguisher. But seriously, let's say you wanted to search for some line of code to put in your game. You can Google search it. You're likely to find someone's code that they've pasted into the community and you just steal it. For example, for my recent game about a dog, I simply Googled patrolling AI agent and I instantly got a script that I could use in my game and just copy and paste. That's a solid community right there and it's just gonna get better. My favorite part of game dev is sound design, especially when I'm recording your mom. I started mixing sounds for my games when I was 16, and never once have I deviated from audacity. It's kind of funny, it still basically looks the same as when I was using it on my Gateway Windows Millennium Edition PC back in middle school, but it gets the job done. And yeah, it's totally free. Compression, distortion, echo, equalizer, reverb, and a bazillion more. Now, where exactly do we get sounds that we can mix in audacity? Well, you record them, of course. Now, I've tried this, and it works for hyper-specific sound effects like character voices. But for other generic stuff, I've actually just used freesound.org. Everything is free, but you should be careful. Not everything is free for commercial use, meaning some sounds can't be used in your game if you're going to make money. So for my two commercial titles, I used thousands of sound samples, spliced them together in Audacity with some effects, and then I created a website with all the credits listed on that site. Then in the credits of the game, I just listed the website URL. Regarding music, this is where owning a Mac for once in your entire life <laughs> might actually be a good idea. For just $2,000, you can get an aluminum cube that can record music. Screen not included. GarageBand comes free with any $2,000 cube. And I'll be honest, I'm about to buy myself an aluminum cube for this exact reason. GarageBand is that good. I actually bought Logic Pro, which is basically the Josh Groban to the Andy Bernard, but <laughs> GarageBand is what I used for my first games. Now I use Logic Pro. If you're using a PC though, there's a few alternatives to GarageBand that actually look honestly like they suck. Instead of lying to you to tie into the video's title here, I'm just gonna say it. If you wanna write great music with free software, it's probably not a great idea. That said, here are a few free alternatives to GarageBand on PC. Um, I'm just gonna recommend Waveform Free and Ableton Live Lite. Ableton is probably the one I would choose because Ableton is actually super similar to GarageBand and Logic Pro, and I've been tempted to transition.
If writing music is not your thing, and honestly, most of you probably don't wanna write your own music, there's actually a few websites, the links are below, that have some free music you can use. Sure, quality music is going to be scarce on these sites, but every once in a while, I'll find a gem. And at the risk of exposing one of my favorite artists, here he is, his name is ERH, and he's on freesound.org. His music is top notch. You may have to ask him though, using the message system on freesound.org, because his music is not necessarily free for commercial use, but I will say sometimes he says yes. Yes. Another great site is dig.ccmixter.org. The tracks on here are free for commercial use and they're not half bad. All in all guys, that's really all you need to make games, seriously. So you really have no excuse not to at least try. And also don't forget about my free 2D game kit below. Again, totally free. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in just 14 days and I got to play it with him on his channel, which was really awesome. Link is below. You can make a million bucks off this game kit. I really don't care. You use it with Unity, pretty awesome. All right, I'll shut up. Cheers.